up, everybody? It's your boy, Coach T, with Chicago Bears 360. Back with another live video and session for you. Thank you for joining today. Today's Wednesday. I'm losing track of what day. It's like March 23rd, something like that. The days are getting away from me. It's been a busy day, man. Hey, we got a good show for you today. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Lucas Patrick All-22 so I'm glad to have everybody joining in. I see you in the comments. If you're in the comments already, do me a favor, man. Do Coach T a favor. And if I can get my mouse to work, run that like, subscribe. Hit the notification bell for me. Let's get those likes busting so we can run this algorithm up. So we can have a lot of people join the party, as many people as possible. Again, this is the Lucas Patrick all 22, but we're going to cover some other Bears news here for you real soon. And I'm going to jump right into it. So the Bears sign free agent offensive tackle Dakota Dozier out of Minnesota. Right. Unrestricted free agent. Offensive guard type. Right. I just watched a little bit of film on him. Looks like he's a gap power and a zone fit. Minnesota runs a lot of inside outside zone. Uh, I would say based off the film I just watched, the kid is average to good in pass protection and good with the potential to be great in run blocking. I think he's a better fit for a gap power scheme than he is for a zone scheme. But that's my opinion. But we're going to talk about offensive line play, particularly your boy Lucas Patrick and so much more as we get into the show. So let's cue the intro and let's get into it. Let's go. Welcome to Chicago Bears 360. Keeping it a buck with Coach T. You know I roll in silence On the road to them Benjis I fill my teeth with diamonds I'm high as fuck in the sky You woulda thought I'm pilot I'm from Chicago It get ugly Fill the streets with violent Life like chess Move to pieces You know I roll in silence Past, present, future We bear down Hey, welcome back to the show. It's your boy, Coach T with Chicago Bears 360. Look, Coach T has to slow itself down, man. I got a lot going on today. So this is our first show live on both YouTube and Facebook. So I'm a one-man band. I don't know if it's working or not on, on Facebook. We'll see later. But if it's your first time to the channel, you're watching live or you're watching on the replay, do me a favor, man. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bells. You can also follow me on Twitter, man, at Bears360 underscore Coach T, man. I exchange tweets pretty much all day, man. If it's Bears football and it makes sense to me, man, I'll tweet to it. Sometimes it's serious. Sometimes I'm just out there having fun, man, on Bears Twitter. Y'all know about the drunk uncles out there on Bears Twitter. And if you don't know what a drunk uncle is, man, stay tuned to the show. We're going to talk about that some more later on in the show. But like I said, man, the Bears have made a move at the guard position, the offensive line position. They pick up your boy Dakota Dozier not even two hours ago. So Coach T had to cram and watch the film on the offensive guard. Like I said, man, uh, I watched about 30 plays of a clip versus men, uh, Green Bay, uh, him blocking versus Green Bay. I think the kid has excellent, excellent feet, excellent, excellent agility. Right. So I saw some pulling plays. I saw some non pulling plays, some plays where he was just running uh, where they were running straight zone plays. But you can see on film that he's really agile. His feet are so quick. Um, do I expect this guy to be a starting guard? guard? I don't know. Um, he sat out last year. He was out most of the season last year. Um, somewhere along, along, along the way, he became a practice squad player within the last two years. So I don't know what Ryan Poe's envisions for this guy. But like I always say about the channel, right, All, like I always say about Chicago Bears 360, the first thing we're going to evaluate players for 
is a fit for the system, right? A fit for the system. Do I believe that Dakota Dozier has the ability to play in this Luke Getzey's gap power system mixed in with a little bit of inside outside zone, mixing in a little bit of RPO? I believe he's going to do all that. Do I have the ability? Uh, do I think he has the ability to play in this system? Absolutely. His feet are good. His hips are good. He's very agile, right? On the film that I did watch, I don't know when that was, but he did look a little bit heavy to me, to be honest with you. And I think Ryan Poles may ask him if he's indeed still that size. He may ask him to drop a few LBs just to fit that 6'3", 6'4", 300 to 305 pound range so he can move a little bit uh, quicker um, when he's pulling or whether they run an inside, outside zone or if they run a screen and he has to get out in open space and block uh, linebacker safeties in smaller corners where he needs to be a little bit fleet of foot out there in the open space. So there you have it. There's your update. You know, we're still everybody waiting on the move, the news for Ryan Poles to make uh, uh, a move. And we're going to get to that in a second. Before I jump too far ahead of myself, man, y'all know how I always like to do it out here, man. I always got to give a shout out to who? That's right. You guessed it. Again, we're trying to get the mouse to cooperate. We got to give a shout out to our field soldiers. That's right, man. Giving a shout out to the field soldiers. That's everybody that chooses or has chose to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and follow me on Twitter, man. We consider y'all some of field soldiers. Quick play on words right there. Field soldiers, soldier fields. QB1 is Justin Fields. So shout out to y'all real fast, man. Let me read through these shout outs real fast. And we're going to get to the rest of the show. So shout out to my boy, Joey Florin, Jeremy Kramer. And shout out to everyone, by the way, because the, the, the subscriptions are going crazy over the last two weeks or so. Subs subs subscriptions, can't talk, are going crazy. Oheen, I'm not going to butcher your name, but shout out to you, Oheen. Hoodie Mellow, shout out to Hoodie Mellow. Chris or Charles Williams. Uh... T. Dupree, 32, Steve O. Speaks. There's been so many more that I don't get the notifications on that I get them on emails. So shout out to all you guys, man, for subscribing to the channel. We're over 600 subscribers in just shy of six weeks. So about 100 subscribers a week, man. I think we're doing pretty good, and I want to keep this momentum going. So if you want to be a part of Field Soldiers, do me a favor, man. Just hit the like, subscribe and notification bell and you can also follow me at twit on twitter at uh bears 360 underscore coach t here's the deal and i always say this every ch uh, show because there's a million bears shows man out there on youtube and shout out to them for you doing your thing but what separates us is from the west rest is we specialize in them x's and o's man we do film breakdown here from a coach's perspective i let y'all in on how I watch the game. I tweeted that earlier, man. No disrespect to anybody. We just don't watch the game the same as coaches, man. I'm watching protections. I'm watching coverage. I watch the games as if I'm sitting up in the booth. I'm not on the sideline calling plays. But when I'm at home, in my head, I'm in the booth, right? And I'm scouting the other teams, whether I'm an offensive assistant I'm scouting the team, uh, the other team for the defense. So I'm watching uh, coverages. I'm watching defensive fronts. And I'm watching tendencies on when they're blitzing on first and third down. I'm seeing so much more than the average I would see. So what I thought I'd do is translate that to YouTube and let my YouTube follows in on a coach's perspective. That's why we're here. Chicago Bears 360 with Coach T, man. We breaking it down to X's O's. That's our niche, man. So I have to do my little 15-minute pitch so y'all know this is a little bit different. And that's okay, man. Everybody's doing their thing. Respect to all the other Bears channels out there, man. Props to you. Now, let's get into it, man. Let's get into a little bit of rumors, man, because we got the, we got the offensive guard news today. But it wasn't necessarily offensive guard news that we were expecting to get, man. Everybody's standing on pins and needles, and we're waiting to hear something about this guy right here, man. Your boy, Ryan Bates, man. We want to hear what's going on with Ryan Bates. I'm a restricted free agent out of Buffalo. I haven't heard anything. Last I heard, he was visiting Hallis Hall. Nothing comes out of that. Now, 
the conversation was that Ryan Bates is a restricted free agent and we have to match Buffalo's numbers. Buffalo went and signed a offensive guard. Now, and then Buffalo is up against the cap hit. So the likelihood of Buffalo being competitive with whatever offer that's put out there is slim and none, right? I think, or somebody else has tweeted, because I'm not a cap guy. I ain't going to try and even fool you on that. But I saw somebody respond to one of my tweets and said, hey, we should be able to land this guy at about seven to nine million a year and be competitive, which is not out of the reach for Ryan Poles, right? Not out of pocket for his budget, right? Young guy, right? And he's going to come in and play, and he's going to be inexpensive. So we don't have to go out there and break the bank on a guy like this. And he's a, what we always check for, he's a system fit. He is a system fit. He plays in Buffalo in a gap power style offense. Of course, when I say gap power, that is primarily what makes the offense stand out is gap power uh, system, pulling guards, pulling tackles, tight ends, pulling whoever, fullbacks, all that good stuff, right? But what you're doing is shifting numbers from one side of the line of scrimmage to the other to create a numbers mismatch. That's the whole idea of it. And the focus is on attacking a specific gap. So your boy Ryan Bates is a fit for that system, right? Fluid in his hips, strong in his hand, real agile, laterally, quick lateral movement. He can get in open space and still be able to block linebacker safeties and corners. That good stuff. Guys like that it seem to be the type of guys that Ryan Poles wants on this offense, offensive line. And there's a lot of conversation out there about what should happen with the offensive line? Listen, I feel like if we get a guy like Bates in, the interior offensive line with the guy that we're going to see a little bit of tape on later, Lucas Patrick, is solidified for right now, right? We'll have a, uh, a stud center. We will have a stud guard. Cody White here do his thing. I believe Cody's a better fit for a gap power system, not the zone system that, that we ran last year. So I think Cody... Um, being a little bit of a smaller guard can get out in the space and, and, and do some things out in space if we pull them and so on and so forth, that add in some screen game and all that other stuff. I believe Cody would excel in this, right? So the question would become our offensive tackles, right? Our rookie offensive tackles, right? Or our second year, our sophomore offensive tackles, right? I still think Tevin Jenkins has a lot to prove coming off an of injury last year, right? He wasn't 100% healthy. Coming off a back injury, said he had lost a lot of strength, right? Upper body strength and so on and so forth. So we didn't really see what we needed to see from Chevin Jenkins for us to be completely uh, uh, confident that he's going to be able to go into next season and be that dude that we thought it would be coming out of the draft last year. Also, right, that, that puts that to bed. That's my opinion. That's my take on that. Also, a lot of takes about Larry Borm, right? And I'm not down on Borm. I tweeted about that this morning. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not down on Borm. However, I don't care for the takes that say we don't have to worry about Borm because he had good games against J.J. Watt and against uh, uh, Joey Bosa, right? So I was tweeting back and forth with somebody this morning about the su subject. So I, you know what Coach T going to do. I'm going to put the film on. So I went and took a look this morning because it was when you watch the game again, I saw this during the game. I saw this during the game, but, and I saw this during several games, but I want to confirm what I was seeing, right? When you see it in the game, it's happening super fast and you're like, okay, you're paying attention. At least I am. I'm paying attention to a million things, right? Down in distance. I'm paying attention to what the actual call is, you know, quarterback play, not just the results of the play. Did we get a first down or not? Paying attention to so many things. But I thought I saw this on film, and this is why I don't care for that take, that Larry Bosa had good games against those guys because guess what? He received a lot of help. He, see, he received a lot of help from running back chips, tight end chips, right? So the evidence is inconclusive on, on Larry Bo Bosa. So I went back and watched the entire Pittsburgh game where everybody claims that he, you know, he just – had such a great game. But if you look at the film of the Pittsburgh game, 
Yeah, he had a good game within the game plan. So Bill Lazor actually game planned for to neutralize uh, the Watt brother, right? He game planned to to neutralize a lot of what Watt would be effective at. So a lot of those plays, you'll see he'll boot away from Watt. Um, you saw he had the one sack in that game where he booted towards him. Big mistake, bad call. But a lot of times he would boot away from Watt or he'll get uh, put Watt in a situation where he was compromised run a zone read towards his direction where um he put uh he make Watt the the quarter uh the defensive end or linebacker that Justin would read so he would put him in compromised position that way or he would just call quick quick hitches of five yard uh routes where you know the ball was going before Watt got a chance to get a good pass rush move in. And then the other times Larry Boren was get he was getting help from um a tight end. He was getting chips from running backs and tight ends, there was about seven or eight plays where he got the chance to go one on one with uh, with T.J. Watt. I want to say J.J. Watt so bad. There was about seven or eight plays where he had an opportunity to go one on one with T.J. Watt, and he won about three of those plays. They were good plays where he won the three he won. They were good, but he gave up a sack on another one. And then he lost the other rep. So just like Tevin Jenkins to me, I think the evidence is inconclusive on, um, on Larry Borum as well. So again, going into, uh, going into the draft, headed towards the season, if we can get a guy like Bates, I would be confident in the interior offensive lineman. But to me, there's still question marks at the tackle positions. I, am I confident that those guys can play? And they can be okay. Yeah, I'm not down on them, but they're still question marks to me. And that's what brings me to my next point. I think if Ryan Poles is indeed going to ride with those two guys and give them an opportunity to prove themselves at the tackle position, right, then he needs to bring in a veteran offensive tackle that's going to be a swing guy that could go either way and play either side like your boy here. Eric Fisher, right? So obvious Indianapolis connect, uh, connection, 31 years old, right? That could come in and be that guy in case one of those guys don't pan out. That could play either side, right? Or come in and still be a veteran presence to push them to make them better. And you can make up your mind in training camp whether the guys are getting the job done. Allow them to go up against your best pass rushers in training camp one-on-one -on -one. because as y'all are going to see in the film breakdown, right? A lot of fans believe that it's just about the five guys up front. When you talk about offensive line play and it's not protection plan includes everybody. It includes the five offensive linemen, the tight end, the running back and the quarterback. Everybody has a role in the protection plan and very rarely our guys blocking, right, five on five, five on four, right? Usually you're going to have a running back and a tight end as part of the protection plan. Now, the best teams in the NFL, the top four teams, I would say, if you watch those guys, those guys have the type of offensive line where they can play primarily with five-man protection for large amounts of time during the game. And when I say large amounts of times in the game. I'm talking about it may be up to 50% of their plays may be with five-man protection. But if you have a porous offensive line, then you need to narrow down the number of plays in which you go with five-man protection and protect whoever that liability is on that front five. So my soapbox moment here is to say, if you're not sure about those two guys on the outside, bring in stud veteran later on for cheap. You don't have to do it now after the draft because guys are going to be out there. And that's what I think fans are missing, right? It's the NFL. There's a lot of dudes out there that can play football, right? They might not be maulers and pancake blockers and pro bowlers, but it's dudes out there that can play football that because of supply and demand, at some point, you're still going to be able to get a good player, I believe, for cheap. So that's an option they have, right? You're not sure about your two sophomore tackles. Um, 
And by, by all means, I'm not down on the guys because here's the deal. You expect them to struggle as rookies. And this is why I was less... Uh, I didn't want to, you know, all the tweets I was seeing about us drafting a, a tackle to protect uh, Justin Fields' blind side. I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of that. Why? I didn't like that take because you're essentially starting over. Listen, guys, listen to me. Listen to me. This is the NFL, right? Offensive linemen are not plug and play, and then you're just off to the races, or just because this offensive lineman had a relationship with that player. They're going to be okay. This is the NFL. This is the best of the best, right? Rookie offensive lineman, right? I, I expect the top 10, if you're drafted in the top 10 of the NFL, right, and you're offensive lineman, I still expect you to come to the league and struggle initially. You're going to struggle for at least half the season because the speed is different. These guys have way more pass rush moves, right? Right? The, the systems, the, the, the twists, the stunts that defensive lines run, all that stuff, the slants, all the stuff that you have to learn, your first year, your head is going to be swimming, right? So I don't expect a rookie to come in, right? So I prefer to stick with our sophomore guys who at least have some game experience. You know, they've got, you know, got acclimated to the league. You know what I'm saying? They know where they live in. They know where they're sleeping. They know what they're eating. They know their schedule. They know the playbook, all that stuff. Now, I can focus on football and learn how to be a pro. So essentially, if I draft a rookie tackle and put him back in there, what I'm saying is I'm ready to start all over, right? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draft a guy that's going to get in there and, you know what I'm saying, he's going to wet the bed for about four or five weeks. And that's how the Borum conversation came up because everybody was like, I don't know. Well, Larry Borum had a decent year. Well, Larry Borum had a tight end. And a running back helping them out half the season until Jeek and Jenkins came back. And then Jenkins came back. They realized, all right, Larry, you know what I'm saying? I can't help you and help Jenkins, right? So we got to pick our poison. So you're, you're on your own now. Now we're finishing the help towards the left side now because this guy's just now getting his feet wet. That's my soapbox moment, man. Listen, man, do me a favor. If you're in the comments section, man. Do me a favor, man. Run the likes up, man. I can't see how many is in the, in the comment section, but do me a favor. Run the likes up so we can get this algorithm busting. Also, if you, if you are a return visitor to the channel, man, don't hold out on me, man. Subscribe, man. We do all this work on YouTube, man. Putting film together, all that stuff, man. Running live shows, man. I'm a one-man band. The way you make sure that we are repaid for our hard work, man, is hitting the like, subscribe, and notification bell, man, and tuning in. Running them subs up for us, man, so we can get back what we get into it. Let's make it worthwhile for us, man. All right. Y'all know what section is of the show this is, man, so we finna get into it. I see y'all commenting down there, and I definitely want to get to y'all comments before we jump into this film, and I don't want to belay that any longer. So let's hit this section, man. Let's see how it's going down in the DMs. Let's go. It goes down in the DM. It go down. It go down in the DM. It go down. It go. All right. Y'all know that's enough of that because YouTube is going to flag me for the music and I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time to be stripping songs and snipping songs out of a video just because YouTube want to play a hate. Right? So let's get to this comment section, man. Let's see what y'all talking about. My man, Rock Davis, man. What you talking about, Rock? He says, I know the rookies are going to struggle. Jenkins didn't play all season. All people thought. Let's see. Let me see if I can get your comment up. He said Jenkins didn't play all season, and people thought he was going to. Yeah, man. I, I agree, too. I agree. You know, everybody... Um, Everybody thought Jenkins was going to play, man. Matter of fact, here's, here's, a, here's a funny thing and a fun fact. Jenkins was actually my preseason pick to come to the Bears. And I thought, I thought he would be the Bears' first draft choice last year. I thought he was going to be the first pick. 
So imagine the surprise and the amazement when we end up with Justin Fields, um, uh, you know, with that first pick. And then we turn around and get Jenkins, too. So um, it's on the, it's on Chicago Bears 24-7, the channel, the, the video from that day, because we did a live draft, which I'm going to do this year on my own channel, by the way. But, bro, we were going crazy, man. I was going crazy, one, because we got Justin Fields, two, because Jenkins was my preseason pick to come to the Bears. I just love this tape. So that's where we at with that one, man. Yeah, I thought he's going to play a lot, too, man. I was very disappointed and am still disappointed until I see – empirical video evidence that he's going to be our tackle of the future. Let's see what my boy Bear Truth got to say if I can get this mouse to work. Uh, let's see. That leads up to my question. Is there going to be an emphasis on wide receiver, uh, our wide receiver to be uh, able to block Do What did I think? I would tell you this about a gap power system, man. Everybody has to be able to block. Everybody that's an eligible receiver Everybody that's an eligible receiver has to be able to block in that system, right? Because they will pull everybody. If you think about the way Kyle Shanahan runs his, right, he will pull wide receivers from the outside. Say he'll go a loose spread gun formation, right, which is two by two, right? I'm going to start talking some X's and O's. He'll go two by two, loose spread gun, right? Two by twos, tight, right? He'll have them tight. And he'll pull those guys from the outside to the inside to get lead up blocks into a hole to, again, manipulate the numbers. It's all about numbers, manipulation, eye candy for linebackers, giving them stuff to see. So linebackers and safeties can't just run up in holes and tee off on our players, man. That's why I love that particular system, man. So uh, that's what we're talking about right there. Uh, let me get to it. I know y'all want to see this film, so I don't want to belay it. But let me get to like two more comments. What up, everybody, man? I see y'all in the shot comments. Shout me out, man. What's up to everybody? I appreciate everybody tuning in, even Don Burr, right? Because I know Don Burr is going to be here like clockwork, right? Uh, we don't want to talk about Sewell, bro. He trashed as far as we can turn. All right. And he still didn't help y'all beat us, Don Burr. That's the bottom line. So there you go, man. I'm out the comments, but I'm going to be checking in as the video footage is playing. Now, I'm going to forewarn y'all already. The video footage is going to be kind of loud. So adjust your headphones or whatever you're listening on. It's not going to go stupid crazy, but it's going to be a little bit louder than right here. But I'm going to be in the comments answering questions or and or after the video is placed. This is your Lucas Patrick All-22. I'm going to talk about it between the breaks and videos. I have about 15 clips. I'm excited to get into it. Man, appreciate my hard work, bro. This, this, you know what I'm saying? I'm an artist, bro. Let's go. All right, for this first play, I thought we would do a little O-line 101 and how pass protections are set up and why I say you don't necessarily want a rookie center, right? At the leadership position or at the center position of your offense, right? So we have our boy right here, Lucas Patrick, right? And he's responsible for just not snapping the ball to the quarterback. He's responsible for making the protection or the slide calls for the offensive line, right? So what he's gonna call out is the four down, right? Or the three down, right? So what the three down mean is which offensive linemen are we sliding to, All right? Generally, we'll have the four defensive down linemen that you would slide towards. But in this case, you actually have this safety right here. I wanna call it a safety or linebacker. It looks like a safety since it's 28, actually at the line of scrimmage, right? So your senator is gonna make a, uh, a protection call that's going to slot the protection to the right right so um in my offense i would give a a slot protection call that starts with an r right might be ringo might be since it's pass protection it's usually related to the sky so it's going to be rain or lightning so i would give a rain call and what that's going to do is move the offensive line slide protect 
to the right, rain, 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 right? That lets everybody know. Slide protect to the right so we can make sure we pick up. And that's a uh, area uh, protection, right? That's a zone pass blocking scheme. They step to a specific area and block what comes to them, right? And on the back side, the back side is actually gonna be manned up. So they're gonna be manned up on this guy, manned up on this guy, and the back has the uh, the linebacker that's not called out. So usually the center is gonna call out a direction and he's gonna call out a backer. He's gonna call out the mic or the additional linebacker um, that they have to block. So he may say rain, rain, and he'll point out the Sam Michael Will, right, in this situation. Let me undo that. He'll point out the Sam Michael Will in this situation. So he don't not only has to snap the ball, but he has to call out a protection, slide protection, um, and he has to call out the Mike Sam Will that these guys, the front guys are gonna be responsible for, the slide side guys are gonna be responsible for if he comes. So they're sliding to the right, that's a rain call, and then the running back is gonna be responsible for whatever backer uh, weak side that he, he doesn't call out. So the line, the running back will scan the line of scrimmage. And as you can see, he's looking right now for who he's gonna have to block backside. That's a little bit of O-line 101. So the way you grade Lucas Patrick in this situation is one, you have to grade him on his protection calls. And if everybody's on the same sheet of music when it comes to slide protection, right? So remember in the last clip I said, you know, he should be given a rain call that's gonna slide protect everybody to the right to make sure they account for the additional body in the box, right? So it usually it would be these four down linemen and it would be a lightning call. So you would wanna move everybody to the left, but because they have an additional body in the box, a safety right here, you're gonna give a rain call slide everybody to the right, and then you're gonna man up on the back side here with these two guys, right? Running back steps in the gap. He's gonna look for this backside backer and everybody's protected. So let's check and see first if he makes the right call and everybody picks up their protection, right? So everybody slides to the right, the front strong side, Center guard tackle slide to the right, Lucas, the guard and the tackle. And you see the guys on the back side are manned up. Man, man, right? And this on the front side is zone, right? Running back is coming on a full play action. That's meant to occupy and tie up the linebacker to hold the linebacker undo. Hold the linebacker here. Get your color right. Hold the linebacker here, but he's checking linebacker for blitz right there, and everything's protected. So that's the first way, way you grade your offensive lineman. Now this play didn't go, but you want to see that your center has good feet, right? So it's going to be a play action screen. It's going to be like a weak zone play action, running back screen to the same side of the play action right here. But I want you to pay attention to Lucas's feet in open space, right? This is how you know you got a good athlete at the offensive line position if i was concerned about his feet i would say so but watch this he's going to come off snap the ball again step with the proper foot watch that right foot move direction no false step right there right he comes he helps with the double rolls off on the screen but what i want you to pay attention to is his feet in open space as he prepares to block right when a big man is running in open space you want to get in open space and then you wanna return back to a good football position, right? So as he's running, now I'm gonna open, open up my legs, get back in a good stance again, right? Get myself in a good position, get myself in the back in a good stance, right? That way, smaller guys can't juke around my block, right? I can move laterally and still, you know, get myself in a position where I can make a block, right? So I had to get back in a good football position stance so I can deliver a block. And you can see Lucas takes his, he takes every opportunity he can to put, put a hat on somebody whenever he can. 
The next way you grade your center, Lucas Patrick here, is on his fundamentals, right? So he has to make sure he has a clear snap to the ball, which there seems to be no problem with him getting the ball back, right? His primary secondary responsibility is getting the ball back to the quarterback after he makes his block, but then being strong at the point of contact, right? Being strong at the point of contact, his feet, if his feet are correct, right? Is he stepping correctly with the right foot? So with offensive lineman, you work from the ground up. Step with it with the correct foot. You see he snaps the ball. Right foot comes up and back towards his kick first. Boom. Right? He's in good position right here. Right? You want to see him a little bit more square to the line of scrimmage right there. But he's in decent enough position. He knows he has help um, to the outside from the guard. Right? Next, from the ground, you want to get his feet in the ground. Make sure his feet are in the ground right here. Good stance, right? You want to be a little bit lower right here, but you work from the ground up from feet to hands, feet to hip to hands, right? So the next thing you want to do is make sure he gets his hands inside. He want to get something on that inner breastplate, right? So the defender gets his hands. He's working outside, but he wants to get one of those uh, breastplate, breastplates. And the defender seems to be working on the guard right here, working towards the guard right here. So this is okay. He knows he has help on the inside. He knows they have him blocked. They have they have the defender's numbers out, man. So it's always, and I'm always talking about the numbers game with protection schemes, right? Right, protection plans. They know they have the numbers game, uh, the numbers advantage because this guy is dropping off. Initially, at the initial start of the play, they thought that this guy was coming, but because he's dropping off, they know it's three versus two. They know where they have help to. Now, Lucas just has to stay um, in his fundamentals, right? Keep his uh, keep his uh, shoulders back, right? Use his hands, play with leverage, and, and he knows the ball's gonna be out, right? So here's the other part I will say about this as well. And I said this a lot with the Nagy, with the Nagy regime. They know, Green Bay knows they're going with five-man protection right here. So with five-man protection, again, the route, the wide receiver route has to match the protection, right? The wide receiver route has to match the protection. So understand if you're going with five-man protection, you're not trying to hit something deep down the field with just five-man protection. Five man protection, snap the ball, fake play action, ball's out. That's something that we didn't see a whole lot of. It didn't match. The wide receiver route distance didn't match the protection scheme. So a lot of times it's not on the offensive line. A sack is not on the offensive line. You have to uh, uh, have a protection plan that correctly matches your wide receiver routes for a play to work, right? If you're gonna go deeper down the field, then you wanna add bodies to this protection plan, right? So snap of the ball, they know they're going five man protection. So five, six, five to seven yards, ball is out, right? And the protection again matches. Step, they know they got the numbers advantage, ball's gone. Again, you wanna be an NFL center, uh, I want you to make the call. Lighten in the rain. Which way are we slide protecting right here? Right? I'm not sure if this is a run play or pass play, but if it was a pass play, which way are you slide protecting the line to right here? Are you going with a lightning or rain call? Exactly. It's just that tough to play that position. So um, we'll let this play forward. And we'll see how it's going. So this is going to be probably a straight. Ah, it's a fake zone pitch. Right, so I would call this, uh, I'll call this, you know, something zone. If we're counting the backs, I'll call it like 30, fake 37 zone. If it's outside zone, inside zone, I'll call it fake 30. I'll call it fake 33 zone. Pitch at eight, right? Eight would be the eight hole. 
right? So if you know football, if you're facing the defense, right? The odd numbers is two, four, six, eight. Even numbers is one, three, five, seven, right? So I'm gonna call it fake 37 or 35 zone pitch at pitch at eight, right? It's simple, man. It's just football, right? Football 101. All right, so we're going to run a fake zone pitch at eight. Let's see how he does in run blocking. Snaps the ball. Again, with, with off, offensive linemen, check the feet. No false steps, right? That's a pro right there. No false steps. Meaning, does he's moving left. Does that right foot move before he moves the left foot? No. He steps. Good feet. Strong. Right? The defender tries to... Give him the old whoop de doo It's ineffective. Now he's in his pads. He seals off his block, running back, getting to the perimeter. There you have it, folks. That's the first clip of your boy, Lucas Patrick. Right? I wanted to cover some football fundamentals again because does y'all no good, does me no good if you're watching the football the same way at the start of the season as you were watching last season, right? And again, I, I emphasize some things with offensive line, particularly center play, because I heard a lot of people saying, hey, uh, we're going to draft a center. We should draft a center. I have this thing about two positions at the offensive line that I don't want new guys, right? I don't want new guys at center and offensive tackles, rookies. Or I would say it this way. They're going to struggle because of the amount of responsibility, especially the center. So as you can see from that clip, the center has a lot more to more to do than just snap the ball, right? People that watch casually watch football think the center's only job is to snap the ball. No, he has to call out the four down and the mic or the three down. In the case of a three four, he has to call down, call out the three down and the backers, right? So whatever you do, you have to account for five men, right? Five men up front and that's the center's job and the center helps the quarterback out in doing that way so he can't you don't necessarily want a new guy um with all that responsibility and learning to play coming into the nfl adjusted and all that other stuff right you want a guy that can come in and have some experience has seen some defenses has seen some fronts has seen some blitzes he's going to help the quarterback out by making his primary, his first responsibility is making the the right call. That's calling down. In the case of a 4-3, he needs to call out the four down and the mic, right? In a 3-4, he has to call out the three down and the two backers, right? What does that do? That's going to let the five front offensive linemen, four down and the mic, four plus one equal five. That's going to let the five down linemen know who they're responsible for. Even when they slide protection, and this is all pre-snap. This is get the play call in, get to the line of scrimmage. Offensive center says, hey, hey, you know, uh, rain, rain, lightning, lightning, and 55's the mic. What's going on right there is he's letting the offensive lineman know who has who. Same thing in the 3-4 defense, but a little bit different variation where he calls down the three down and the two backers that they have. Also, what that's communicating is – who the running back has, right? So if the off front offensive linemen know that they have the four down in the mic, right? Then the uh, running back, if he's part of the protection plan, should know I have the guys that they don't have, right? So don't step to the area in, in which they're already going to be blocking, right? So it's like this beautiful orchestra of responsibility and that's part of the center's responsibility. So also, I'm going to tell you, I want y'all to pay attention to these clips because on the last clip, I actually give a quiz on the last clip. clip on. So I want to see how y'all do on the last clip when we get to it. So let me get this mouse together right here, get myself together, and see what we're talking about. Let me get this one question, and then we're going to get on to it. Uh, that was a compliment. Thank you, sir. Who was that? Baki. Thank you, sir. Uh, who else is this? All right. Let's get to it. Let's get to the next clip, man. 
I hope y'all appreciating this. I hope y'all liking it. This is going to be even more information. Now we're going to go even more in depth about not just Patrick Luke's, Luke's responsibility, but offensive line play. Let's get All it. All right, you think O-line play is easy? I want you to look at the defense right here, and I want you to make the four down call. Look at all these guys up at the line of scrimmage, and you make the four down line call if you're the center, right? Watch these four guys in this circle. You tell me which guy is four down lineman so the offensive lineman can know which way to slide protect, and you make the call as the center. You call the four down lineman. See what I'm saying? So it's key to have a veteran there that knows how to quickly make that call so you can play ball, so you can send players to the right way. And this is the relationship between the center and the quarterback, right? So where the center doesn't see it, the quarterback will. And the center and the quarterback need to be in um, sync with the protection slot. So sometimes you're going to make a protection slot call where you can't account for all the people that's coming. And the quarterback needs to know where you're going to have a free runner, right? Where are you going to have a free runner? So clear this up. If these guys end up, if these guys up front, right, front five, end up blocking, end up responsible for, end up responsible for these five guys, then that's going to leave this guy on the backside as a free runner, right? Now, if the quarterback knows that his running back is going out into the flat for a swing uh, pass or something like that. He has to know. All right, I don't have. I have. I don't have a bunch of time to hold on to the ball. I have a free runner coming. This is all of the intricacies of football, the nuances of football, and O line play, and why it's important to have a veteran uh, center. And then, if you don't have a, a, a veteran quarterback, right? If you have a rookie quarterback, he's going to struggle with a lot of this stuff. And it helps to have an experienced center. A bad combination is to have a young center, inexperienced center, and a young quarterback because a lot of these calls are going to get missed. Now, back to the quiz I just gave. If I'm calling out the protection, I'm going to slide the protection. I'm going to give a lightning call. So that's going to slide the protection to our right. That means we're going to man up on the backside, right? We're going to man up on the backside. And that should account for everybody. I'm gonna call this linebacker out as the, as the mic, right? So the running back will keep an eye on him. Running back, the running back will keep an eye on him and everybody's accounted for, right? So let's see how the call goes and then we'll grade Lucas on his execution of his individual block right so everybody slides left you see the lightning call man on the back side now they do something funky here right somehow they have some specific call instead of them just manning up on the back side one to one well i guess technically they did but that was that was kind of different there it might be some kind of special call but either way everybody's accounted for it. and this it's every you know all the talk about Aaron Rodgers quarterback play probably not enough attention is given to how the protection plans for him and people like Tom Brady are always clean right you never hear about these guys taking a bunch of hits that's because there's a you know a good protection plan in place to make sure these guys stay clean right so let's go back to Lucas's individual block snaps the balls again now we saw him step right after the snap snap with no false steps let's see if he steps left you see that if you're paying attention to detail right watch this you can't see it. it's kind of hidden behind the defender but watch watch when he steps left now we saw him snap and step right with the with no false steps watch he snapped the ball step left no false steps again getting himself in position to zone protect right this is an area of zone protection, right? If they were going man on man, they would call Bob. They would call it bobbing it or bobbing it. That's just big on being a big on big or man protection. But he steps to his proper zone, gets himself in position. He makes a good call. Part of, again, part of judging him on doing his job is is the play protected? Look at that. 
look at that. So you want to look forward to something good. Know that you're going to have a center that can get the offensive line in the right position. And understand, that's why I said he's just not a guy. He has to be the alpha, the leader of that group. This is him on uh, Miles Garrett, right? So he's giving Miles Garrett the business right here. Let's see how he finishes up this block. Grade him on the finish of the block. He kind of gets his feet. What I, what I, if I'm a nitpick, I don't like that he has his head over his toes. He's leaning forward a little bit too much, but I understand this is Miles Garrett. So if you see his head in comparison to his toes, when he leans in, he has to sit back in a chair and punch here a little bit, but I understand. And then he also, you want to get him square to the line of scrimmage, right? He want to get himself square to the line of scrimmage and close the door instead of providing this, this lead, this lane right here for Miles to, he provides an alley because he doesn't close the door so much right here. He wants to position himself a little bit, a little bit more you know what I'm saying, that way, right? To get in a better position, to understand this is the NFL, that's Miles Garrett. There is no perfect situation. At the end of the day, does the job get done, right? Miles could have disrupted that play, but he didn't. So we'll give him a B minus C on the actual block itself. Again, there's so many nuances to football. That's why practice is important. You have to get the details right, right? So this is a run play, but do you still call, make a make a pass protection call, even though you know it's a run play, right? You're in a shotgun formation. Do you want to tip the defense off, right? What count? What's the snap count? What, what, what snap count are we going to? Are we going on one? Are we going on two? Are we going on three, right? What's the slide protection? Is it a run play? Is it a pass play? Like so many things could be going through your mind. This has to become muscle memory. You got to know what's going on. Then you got to know if it's a run play, where am I stepping? Where am I blocking to, right? So it's a run play in this case, but as a center, you still want to give a protection call because you don't want to tip run a pass to the defense, right? Because they pick up on everything, especially defensive linemen, right? So again, it's a run play. I believe it's going to be to the offensive right, right? So this is what I call, um, this is what I would call split zone. No, it's going to be some kind of power, right? So there you go for all those that's calling Lou Getze a, a zone guy, right? This is not a zone play, right? Why do I know it's not a zone play? Because the watch the guard is pulling to the strength. Anytime you're pulling guards, and this is why we got to get your boy Ryan Bates or a guard in there that's pulling. That's why uh, Ryan Poles want to go with a uh, lighter, leaner offensive lineman, because if your offensive line are gonna be running all day from one side of the formation to the other, they need to be mobile and agile, right? So the other, the other indicator that this is a power play is because the blocking scheme for power plays are is block down, right? You wanna get ear hole blocks with your offensive lineman, block down and kick out. Kick out is your pulling guard, guard right? He's gonna kick out either this last man right here, or he's gonna lead up in the hole and come up on your linebacker. I hope I made that make sense. Let's undo this. Let's do it again. The blocking scheme for power plays is block down, block down, up, oh, undo, block down, kick out. In some shape or form or fashion, that's gonna happen. Let's see how Lucas does his job right here. Again, no false steps, right? So he's blocking down, boom. He has to sit. This is why I said Brian Allen wasn't couldn't be a good fit for a power gap scheme because you can't be a, a thin guy at center in a power gap, gap scheme because if this defender right here gets penetration, this is blown up. He's gonna get in the way of this pulling guard right here. He's gonna get in the way of the pulling guard and blow this whole play up. So you have to have a good center that's strong at the point of contact that can come off the ball and get a stalemate right here so this guard can pull. That's why I didn't like Brian Allen 
um, as a free agent signing because he was too thin, too light as a center that I thought he wouldn't be able to hold up in a power gap center. Watch uh, Lucas Patrick come off the ball. Boom, stalemate, backside, block down, stalemate. Does the guard clear his butt, pulling? Yes. Not only does the guard pull, clear his butt, but now you got the tight end coming too, right? So you're gonna see some of this, I believe, in the Luke Getze offense. This is a little, this is a little bit of power football, pulling guards, tight ends, and tackles. These two guys back here, right? These two guys right here, pulling here. One guy's responsible for kicking out. One guy's responsible for leading up in the hole. That's power and counter, right? Power and counter, right? So your running back should be taking the jab step this way and then getting up in the hole to give those guys time to clear. All right, you're Lucas again. Make the slide protection call. Who are your four down in the mic? Who's the offensive line responsible for? Okay, in this case, Lucas gives a lightning call. So he's gonna slide protect to the left, right? And they're gonna man up on the backside. They're gonna call out four as the mic, right? So they're slide protecting left. But again, just quick scout of uh, Green Bay so far, all the plays I've seen, everything, five man protection, the ball's coming out quick. This is something you can look forward to in a Getsy offense. Something that I don't think um, Matt Nagy understood in his protection plans. Not that he couldn't draft up good wide receiver route comps. Con well, maybe he didn't. But the fact that if your protection plan doesn't match a wide receiver route, then it's going to be a catastrophe. So five-man protection, slide protect with a lightning protection, and slide protect him left, right? Man up on the backside, so slide protect left. Man up on the backside, right? They know they have man coverage, so the running back's going out. Linebacker's going with him, so they don't have to worry about him blitzing in this situation. If he did, Aaron would have the blitz of one-on-one, -on -one, or actually the offensive line would know he was coming because of the call, right? So they don't have to block inside out on the backside. But understand again, Right, five-man protection, ball is out, boom. Now that's scouting the offense. Let's take a look at Luke doing his job. Snaps the ball, makes the right call, snaps the ball, no false steps, boom. Gets in the position early, boom. Feet in the ground. Feet in the ground. Solid stance. Hands next, hands should be coming next, boom, clear. Feet in, solid in the ground, nice wide stance. Boom, hands coming next, see that punch? Stalemates him with the punch, extends. And with five-man protection, you just need to hold up long enough for him to get the ball out. If Aaron gets sacked right here, it's on Aaron. All right, here's an example where I don't believe the slide protection is actually called correctly. So uh, just looking at this play automatically, I'm a slide protect, I'm gonna give a lightning call and so slide protect everybody to the right, right? Because just pure numbers, right? I'm looking at the numbers. If I'm counting this guy, if I'm counting this guy, one, two, three, four, right? And I can man up on the backside where this guy's accounted for and this guy's accounted for in a man protection, right? So keep that in mind as I let this play out and what actually happens, right? So actually they go opposite. There you go, man. So there, there I'm give, I'm trying to give you different variations of, of what to look at, man, from an offensive line perspective, but also great our guy. Can our guy play? Can Luke play? Absolutely. Um, I think he has an opportunity to excel in his offense because, one, he's not looking over his shoulder at the next guy, right, snatching him in and out, playing week to week. He doesn't have consistent week of reps. So once he – he's the man. He's the man in Chicago. He gets to make all the calls. He gets to be the hero. He gets to basically take that next step in his career on that big contract. And you can see he can make all the, he can make all the calls. He can make all the plays in this system. Um, somebody had a good question, right? How do we get uh, – let me find a question in the comment section. 
how do we get this kind of play, right? How do we get this type of play, or how does Getze get this play out of the group we have? Um, I think the first thing, uh, I'm trying to find your comment first. I think the first thing is to get the right people in the building, right? So, um, you know, that that's the first step. And that was Jeremy's question. How do we? How does Luke Getze get that in Chicago with this OL group? Um, again, the first thing, like I started to say, is get the right people in the building, man. That's why. And it, it is tricky, right? It's tricky with those two sophomore tackles, right? So, and especially with our cap situation, do you go out there and try and blow a bunch of money on guys that probably won't make – well, we know they're not going to make a Super Bowl run, right? So let's, let's be fair and be honest right here, right? So are you blowing the bag on people like Armstead, even though he's already been picked up? by Miami, but to help you with the decision-making process or try to get into Ryan Poe's head, would you go out there and blow a bag on a team that you know that's probably not going to make a run this year? Or do you see what you have? And I say you see what you have. So getting the right people in the building first, right? And as far as getting this type of play out of the players, I think we have the right system, right? And again, a bit. I think the biggest win from a, a Matt Nagy system to a Luke Getzey system is this: the protection plan is going to be cemented. It's, it's going to be a more mature protection plan, right? It looks like, and and it appears that Luke is going to have a good protection plan, and you're not going to have um, guys running 15 yard routes with five man protection. I mean, it has to be smart. If we don't have the five guys up there that'll stand up, right, then be smart. And you see right here with Aaron Rodgers, they still, with five-man protection, got the ball out of his hand. They didn't let him take hits where he had to sit down there and hold the ball all day. And then part of that, the latter part of that is going to fall on the Justin to understand, again, understand your protections as the quarterback, right? Five-man protection, the ball has to come out. Either throw it, throw it away, or run. You have to. Everybody has to be in concert. Also, Justin, one of my criticism of Justin's, and it's fair because I watched the film on him. Justin has to get rid of the ball, not just get rid of the ball, but I meant to say Justin has to recognize blitzes, right? He has to take the step this year where he recognizes blitzes, where blitzes are coming from. And one of the things I saw on film with Justin is. Justin never switches up his snap count. I actually inboxed his, his quarterback's coach who lives here in, in Georgia, in the Atlanta metro area. I, I, I've been in same coaching clinics with him and all that stuff. Quincy Avery, I inboxed him, right? And I was like, bro, here, this is free. I'm not even going to charge you. Justin, I saw a whole film. I think it's a uh, Minnesota game. Justin didn't switch the snap count out not one time except for an obvious pass down. If you switch your snap count out, right, and you go on a hard count, that's going to unveil or reveal blitzers, right? So if you go set, uh, uh, right, you give a hard count and blitzers are coming, then they're going to jump as if they're coming. That's going to let you know who's going to come, who's coming. So your offensive line can then make the protection adjustment and you can win the play, right? So small nuances like that, small uh, things like that is going to help them. And again, I think Luke is going to come in with a good protection plan from the jump way better. I don't think Nagy understood protections. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't think he understood protection. I think he was th drawing up plays like it was sand -like football. You run here, cross here, blah, blah, blah. And he didn't think about, okay, can I protect this? This is the first rule of offensive football. Before you draw up a play, you ask yourself, can I protect it? And I don't think Nagy did that. And that's why we got ourselves in a lot of trouble. Actually, it's how I ended up here because at some point I was watching film and I was like, I don't think this guy understand protection. So I started doing breakdowns on five-man protection, which led to more and more videos. Either way, that's where we are with it. Lucas Patrick can play. I'm going to play a little bit more of this last clip, and then we're going to get out of here. Um, it's been over an hour. So let's see what we got to say in this last clip because I don't want to waste my film because um, I already put the hard work in. Now for this play, we're going to see a call, a center call that we haven't seen thus far in the film breakdown. And this is going to be some kind of wing or spread call from the center 
right? And what that's doing is it just expanding the offensive line. So if you can see what the defensive line is doing right here, they're going in some wide techniques, right? So you got your three techniques right here and right here. But these guys are going out to a kind of wide four, five, six, wide nine right out here. So how do you address this as a center? And again, a lot of people don't understand that the center's responsibility is adjusting protection along with the quarterback. He's working with the quarterback to make sure he has a protections on, but this primarily is his job, right? The quarterback has to worry about so much other stuff. So the sender has to make sure the right call is. What is the call on here? I'm gonna call this, uh, as a coach, as an offensive coach, I'm gonna call this something that has to do with spread, right? I'm not just gonna make it spread so I can make it obvious, right? So I'm gonna use a, uh, I'm gonna use a name associated with spread, maybe sandwich spread, something like uh, mayo, mayo, right? Mayo, you spread mayo, peanut butter, peanut butter. You spread peanut butter on the bread, right? Something that has to affiliate it with spread, right? And watch the offensive line motion at the snap of the ball. You want to spread out so you can take care of those wide techniques, right? So watch how the offensive line spreads and goes to the various areas so they can pick up, right? And help out. So the center has to choose Who's the closest threat to the line of scrimmage between these guys, even in the spread, right? So is the interior three technique, which one is the closest threat to the line of scrimmage? That's where I'm going to look first and then check back the other side, snap of the ball, boom. I'm going to check the nearest threat to the line of scrimmage first on, if I'm Lucas, on my left, and I'm going to help out there. They're going to pass the three technique along the Lucas, Watch his, watch his base, watch his hands, feet in the ground, hands inside, maybe one on the outside right there, right? You wanna gobble this guy up. Again, five man protection ball should be coming out quick, but I wanted to show that there because it's the first time we've seen a spread protection right there. So in this play, I wanna emphasize the importance of having a running back that can block and that's aware of the protection plan. So here at this point, this later in this, this point in the clips, you should know what a rain call is. I'm not going to go over it again. A rain call, we're going to slide protect right. We're going to man up on the backside, right? So we're going to slide protect here. We're going to slide protect right. We're going to man up on the backside, right? Now, again, for this clip, I'm emphasizing running back protection, right? A running back, everybody has to know the protection schemes. Everybody has to know the protection plan. A running back just can't be a guy that gets handoffs. He has to know his job in the protection plan here, right? So he also has to be good in his technique. Snap of the ball, boom. Rain call, slide protect, right? They man up on the backside. The fullback goes out as an eligible receiver. But I want you to keep your eye on the running back right here, right? He has to be aware of what's going on, right? He, he can't wet the bed as far as his assignment, right? He has to be patient. He should sit, actually, his position in here a little bit more right because you can see miles garrett hits the tackle with a spin move and watch what the running back does you're ineffective now you you went to the wrong spot right so had he stepped up in the gap right he's paying attention he stepped up in the gap he's meeting miles garrett at the end of the spit and if it's a dedicated six-man protection call you're useless in this case when you don't go to the right assignment because if you were going to do this, we could have sent you out in the flat and made you another eligible receiver. You're giving the defense an advantage, a numbers advantage. If we're going to leave you in the block, right, you have to do your job or else, you know what I'm saying, you're just giving the defense a numbers advantage or else we would have put you in the pattern as an eligible receiver. This is the importance of everybody being on board. So it's not just the offensive line a lot of times. It's the tight ends. It's the quarterback. It's the running back. Everybody has to be doing their job in a protection plan. But we default to the front front five guys up front and say the offensive line is good or bad. But we don't, we don't see this stuff like this right here. We don't see stuff like this right here on game day. We don't see stuff like that. That's the running back wet in the bed and not being there. If we kept you in to do a job, you got to do your job. 
And I just did a clip about the importance of running back protections. I know this breakdown is supposed to focus on Lucas Patrick, but all of this is part of the protection plan. Does Lucas have the right protection call on, right, in this case, right? So for whatever reason, they're going to go with a short side, right, a weak side lightning call. So he's going to turn left, slide protect left, and then man up on the backside, I believe. Yeah. So they're going to slide protect left, man up on the backside, but the running back, again, has a specific job in that split of the protection, right? The slide side versus the zone side. Usually the running back is going to be stepping up in the gap, right? To take care of the mic. That's why they call the mic out, right? That's going to be this guy right here, right? And I'm going to tell you why they call the mic out for situations like this. So Lucas gets a snap back. He steps with the correct foot initially off the snap, hands inside. Great block right here by a guy, right? He has this guy on a stalemate. Nothing should happen. Funky right here. He's good. But watch what could blow this play up. Line, linebackers coming like a heat seeker. Boom. And this guy has to step up in the hole and do his job. Again, we always talk about the five guys front offensive linemen. But a lot of people don't understand a running back has a job in the protection plan as well. So watch this. Six-man protection is on with a chip coming off of this side. But if we undo and we watch the drama that's going down in the middle, clear this up. Middle linebacker's coming on a mic blitz. Running back has to step up and meet him. Now, again, he's going this way, right? There's nothing to say that he shouldn't have went that way. But I'm nitpicking, right? Because he put himself in a bad position. You're going to see the results of choosing the wrong wrong direction. If there's no play action or no reason for you to go that way. And here's the thing, right? He might have had a responsibility to help here, right? Undo. Help here. But you're supposed to check Mike first. Check Mike first. Check the mic first before look inside out. So... Again, the fundamentals. He should have looked inside. All right, Mike's coming. Stepped up in here. Right? But watch, because he took a false step, he has to go around Aaron Rodgers, and he gets himself blown up because he didn't check inside out. So watch this. Boom, took a false step. Now I got to come back and recover. Oh, snap, I'm in trouble. Yep, and that's how you get blown up right there that's i'm sure they have fun with that in the film session uh you know with his coaches so i know i've shown a lot of pass plays so far so this time i'm just going to show a basic running play that our boy luke is doing his job that he can do his job in the run game so especially against a zero technique right so if you got a guy barreling down on you, you got all these responsibility making calls snap the ball then I got a slide protection and I got to step off with the right foot and do all this with a guy barreling down on me in this in the zero technique. How does Lucas handle it right here? All this responsibility. Again, this is why I don't want a rookie at the center position being the captain of my offensive line. Right. All this pressure. Yeah, he's been doing it in college, but the offensive line NFL is a different animal. Right. I got all these bodies up here. I know I'm stepping right, right? So I got to snap the ball. Step with the correct foot. No, no false step. Look at those feet. Boom. Is there a false step in there? Boom. He's going back a little bit with that right foot. You like to see him go a little bit forward. But as long as he gets in the right position, right? Hands in the right position. Feet in the right position. Hands in the right position. Right? This is the NFL. You're not mauling a whole bunch of people in the NFL where you're just going to dog without a running start. But does he do his job? It's not a big run, but yeah, he's in there in the scrum making things happen. I don't know what this play was. It might have been a third and one or something like that, but they just need to get a first down. But yeah, your boy can run block too. Just more run footage focused on Lucas being the beast in the middle of the center position. Again, I'm looking for false steps in the run game. Make sure he's not making any false steps. Boom, stepping with his left foot, feet in the ground, right? Got a good base right now. Hands, bring, you got your feet, now bring your hands, boom. And a little uppercut right there, uppercut motion. 
I'm gonna bring them hands together. Give you a little punch up in there in the gut and just gobble up. I'm gonna gobble up the three technique and just run your feet. Get them out the hole. This is on some kind of reverse fake. Uh, it's a fake uh, power, fake counter, uh, fake power, fake zone, split zone, reverse call here. Pretty good play, actually. But you see Luke in there getting busy. All right, so for this one, this is the quiz for you, right? You've been watching all these clips. You know there's a protection plan. So the first question for the quiz, quiz is how many men is it? are in the protection plan. I'm gonna roll the clip. Let you tell me how many men are in the protection plan. And based off of that number, when should the ball be coming out? Should the ball be coming out fast or can Aaron hold afford to hold it for a little bit? How long should the wide receiver routes be? When should the wide receivers be breaking with this protection plan? How many men are in a protection plan, right? What should the wide, rece wide receiver route combination be? Where should they be breaking five to seven yards, 10 plus, what? And then I want you to give me the center call, right? Give me the center call. Is it lightning? Is it rain, right? Give me the center call. I'll run the clip for you again. All right, last but not least, I want you to describe what that call does, right? Who has zone and who has the man-to-man -man in that call? Whatever call you made, lightning or rain, who has zone, who has man-to-man? -man? I'm teaching here. I'm trying to make a smarter football audience. There you go, man. That's the show, man. I'm just dropping some knowledge out there for you to digest, man. Again, we may not have the largest channel, man, but we're going to have the smartest channel. And that's the intention, bro. Somebody put in my uh, inbox the other day, man, uh, actually tweeted me or responded to a tweet, man, and said, Coach T, I appreciate you. You're changing the way I watch football, man. And that was the biggest compliment ever, man. And that's the intention, man. I enjoy the X's and O's of football. Most coaches do, man. So there you have it. At the, at the end of the day, can Luke Patrick play? Yes. But I like the opportunity that Ryan Poles created for all these guys and a lot of guys that he's bringing in. These are opportunity guys. Those guys that prove they can play other places, but they have to come to Chicago and prove it. Luke Patrick has an opportunity to cement his legacy uh, in football by pairing himself up with or being paired up with um, a quarterback that has great potential in Justin Fields. So he has opportunity to feed his family for a long time. And a lot of times for a lot of these players, that's all it's about, man. It's all about you helping secure their future and the future of their family. So I believe he can play. Um, he still has a lot to prove. Um, great upside, um, great hands in. I believe he's an above average run blocker, above average um, pass blocker. Um, I believe, you know, in the 80th or 90th percentile, he makes the right calls and gets people in the right position. And the added bonus for Luke, Lucas, right? Lucas Patrick is that he's being paired up with Luke Getze. And don't take that lightly, right? Don't take that lightly because 
understanding all those jobs that he has to do right as a center. Now, if you have a guy that's on the same page with your offensive coordinator, imagine how that's going to help. So the, the, the center is the captain of the offensive line. So while the offensive coordinators communicate with the quarterback, now you have a center that can turn and teach your offensive line. So then it's going to become an issue of, and I believe that's why we sign EQ, uh, Equinemius, uh, St. Brown, right? He's going to be another guy that can come in and communicate what guys are supposed to be doing and making sure guys in the, in the right spot. So all that's going to help translate. But anyway, man, I don't have a um, drunk uncles for you, even though there's plenty of candidates out there. But if you're on Twitter, on Bears Twitter, do me a favor, and I put this out today, man. If y'all see crazy tweets out there, man, listen. Tag me in the tweet. Hashtag drunk uncles or don't. Just tag me in the tweet, and I will feature, if it qualifies, I'll feature it on the show as a drunk uncle post of the award. I'm not going to embarrass anybody and throw their names up there, but I'm going to throw the post up, and I'm going to talk about it and debunk it or debate it um, using the X's and O's. That's what it's all about. Look, we already been over here well over an hour, man. Thank y'all for joining the show. Shout out to Don Bird. Shout out to Julius. Shout out to Bear Tooth, my boy Baki. Everybody that's tuned in, man, I appreciate you. Man, if you join the channel or show later, do me a favor. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter, Bears360 underscore Coach T. Let's run this thing up to 1,000, man, well before the season starts because I'm going to live show and live stream during games or certain games during the season. The ones I'm not at. Right. I'm a live stream the games so we can have that live interaction during games, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Coach T, I am out of here. Deuces.